Good afternoon. It's 3.08. It's uh, time for you to be adrenalized, people. It's time for you to get that blood flowing, get that mind going, get that body going. Live an adrenalized life. That's what I want you to do right now. Why? Because we're here. Because we're alive and it's time for us to be motivated to be our best self. And hello, everyone. Welcome to the Tom Marino Show. I am your host, success strategy coach, Tom Marino. Thank you so much for tuning in. It is a beautiful, warm, early summer day out there today. And it is just so nice to see blue skies after that terrible thunderstorm this morning that we had. It was, I don't know about you, but it woke me up from my sleep. Um, but I want to hear from you folks. I want to hear from you. Give me a call at uh, 631-451-1039. We are live on the air right now. Uh, give us a call. If you have a question, we're going to be talking about podcasting today. Uh, we're going to be talking about anything you want to call and ask a question about, but let's try to call about podcasting if you have an interest in that uh, at 631-451-1039. And I want to hear from you directly. I want you to visit me at tommarino.com. That's tommarino.com. Uh, go to my website, fill out a contact form, sch schedule a free success strategy session for yourself, people. I know there's a lot of out, uh, people out there right now that are in indecision mode. I have been talking to so many of my clients and it just seems like everything is so indecisive. Everyone is being so indecisive. People, take action. Do one thing different. Take one step towards what it is that you want to do. Don't let indecision be your only action. Don't let that be the only action. Don't suffer from analysis paralysis. Don't suffer from overthinking. Stop thinking and just start doing. It's time for that. That's the, this is the time of year to stop all of the nonsense, get out of your own way, and just start doing something different. Uh, before we get into our show, I want to thank our sponsor, New House Restoration, where they turn your damaged old house into a new house. Visit them at newhouserestoration.com. That's newhouserestoration.com. If you had a flood, fire, sewer backup, asbestos issues, contact New House Restoration at 631-604-8590. That's 631-604-8590. And listen, I want to invite you to a very special event happening right here tonight in MacArthur Airport, right outside the news station, right outside the studio. We have our business networking event from six to nine tonight. Come on down, meet your favorite host of LI News Radio. I'll be here. Come get a copy of my book if you haven't gotten one yet. And I will be here tonight from six to nine. So come on down. There'll be some snacks. There'll be a lot of fun, a lot of businesses, a lot of people networking. And it'll be it's a great opportunity for you to, to meet a lot of your favorite hosts that you get to hear every day on the radio. All righty. Let's get into the show today. So I want to work welcome to the show, Rich Butler, um, who is the founder of RageWorks and the RageWork Podcast Network. Uh, you can find Rich on Instagram at RageWorks, simply at RageWorks, yep. uh, or at RageWorks.net. Uh, RageWorks is a content creation brand specializing in audio, video, and written content in the gaming, entertainment, and pop culture space. So welcome to the show, my friend, Rich Butler. Thank you for having me, Tom. I really appreciate it. And I'm glad to come out here to MacArthur Airport on this wonderful day and chop it up with you. Fantastic. I love it, Rich. Rich, you and I have known each other for a little while now. You have given me so much help already on my podcast that I've been doing, and we're going to be doing another one. Actually, we're going to be working together on a, on a podcast. Um, and I, you know, podcasting, I feel like it's still a relatively new thing. But dude, you're, you're a pioneer of podcasting. I was looking at your bio, 2006, 2009. Tell us how you got into this business of podcasting. So podcasting joined the Apple podcast iTunes ecosphere in 20, in 2006. And at the time, I was, like anybody else, just looking for new content to consume. And I really liked the freedom that was afforded by so many different creators. So I started just consuming different podcasts. And I came across a group of guys out of Cleveland, and their show was Video Game News Radio. And blue collar guys, just a bunch of guys, barbershop talk about video games. And I'm like, man, this is great. So I started engaging with their community, being involved with their community on a consistent basis. Next thing you know, hey, man, do you have Skype? Do you want to call in? Called in a few times, brought a little bit of that New York to their, <laughs> to their, to their Cleveland. That's it. New York and Cleveland. Huh? Yeah. 
And um, next thing you know, they say to me, oh, man, you should do this. You should do a podcast. I'm like, nah, I'm not going to do it. And one of their listeners messages me and he goes, listen, I'm starting a podcast. I'm in Canada. He goes, do you want to be my second mic? I said, all right. You know, recorded a few episodes. Next thing you know, he said, man, you really should do this, man. So I said, eh, let me give it a shot. So I went, I launched My Take Radio. It was my first podcast covering mixed martial arts, professional wrestling, gaming, and entertainment, all the stuff I was into. Wow. And the thing about it was when I did it, it pretty much combined all of those interests. And I was just looking for other people like me that mm-hmm. were just into all of these different things. So did that in 2006, pretty, pretty heavy, but you couldn't track it. You didn't know who was listening. Like I'd get feedback emails, right. but nothing crazy. 2009, I was approached by a company called Blog Talk Radio that allowed me to run the podcast live. So it let me do a live show just like we're doing here with a producer, Mm -hmm. uh, call screener, call in number, the works. And the thing about it was that it allowed me to do the show live and I was broadcasting live from 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. Wow. And same four topics and I was taking calls and it just was a game changer. It allowed guests to call in, listeners to call in. We had different mixed martial artists, wrestlers, actors. It was amazing. And because of that, you know, you get the keeping up with the Joneses syndrome. So yep. you got to start a website. So yep. I started mytakeradio.com to go with that. And the more work I put into it, the more I realized that it was eclipsing the podcast. So I did my take radio for 412 episodes. Wow. Not even counting spinoffs and everything else. Shortly after that, a lot of the writers on the site, they wanted a podcast and they said, Rich, you know, I really want to get started. And I was getting burned out. I got married. Life gets in the way. So I said, you know what? I'm going to retire my show, but I'll tell you what, I hope you guys start your podcast. So Uh next thing you know, as my my take radio was winding down, it served as the foundation to create Rageworks, which is actually an acronym for Rants About Gaming, Entertainment, and the Works. Uh, (laughs) I love when I find someone who loves acronyms as much as I do. Rich, there's so many people that are listening that, you know, if they have heard me before, they know that I am the acronym king. Okay. (laughs) I love it. I love it. What was it for? Racing? No, rants about gaming, entertainment, and the works. Rants about gaming, entertainment, and the works. And that's where you came up with Rageworks. For those of you just tuning in, we're speaking to Rich Butler, the founder of Rageworks uh, and Rageworks Podcast uh, Network. And, um, you know, Rich has been doing this for such a long time. We're going to get into so many topics today because I know, Rich, we, you know, one of the key things that I find with a lot of my clients is that they all want to start a podcast. They all, everyone wants a podcast and yep. it's really replaced and revolutionized the radio industry, the, the, the entire world and, and being able to speak a message. Absolutely. I think that the big problem is though, that for as much as podcasting has advanced, there's a lot of gurus, misinformation mm-hmm. and going back to what I said before, the necessity to want to keep up with the Joneses. Everybody wants to be the next Joe Rogan. Uh, right. You know, and the problem with that is that people forget that Joe Rogan was a stand-up comedian, did Fear Factor. He had a very deep well right. to pull from. So all he did was, hey, I'm launching this new thing. Please join me. And then people just followed and right. it grew. Right. And I think that that's the biggest thing with podcasting. And people automatically, they'll say, oh, another podcast. But you know what? At the end of the day, it's not about the horse. It's about the jockey. Exactly. So you got to bring personality to the mix for that. Right. You know, that that is very true. There is just so much about podcasting that so many people don't know. It's not as complicated as it seems, but it, there is complications in there that evolve, of course. Of course. But um, we're going to get into a whole slew of this. So I want you to give us a call. If you have a question about podcasting, Rich is your guy to ask that question to. It's uh, 631-451-1039. We are live in the studio. That's 631-451-1039. And listen... Check out Rageworks.net. Rageworks.net is his website. You can reach him at at Rageworks on Instagram. And listen, check out my Instagram, people. I've been posting some fun stuff the last couple of days at Tom Marino Coaching. All right, we will be back right after this commercial break. Hey, 
this is Tom Marino of The Tom Marino Show here. Imagine you wake up and you've had a major sewer back up in your home. Well, let me tell you about a company that I've worked with personally, New House Restoration, where they take your damaged old house and make it a new house. For any water, fire, mold, or asbestos damage, please call them at 631-604-8590. That's 631-604-8590. New House Restoration. And welcome back to the Tom Marino Show. I'm your host, success strategy coach, Tom Marino. Welcome back. Today, we are live in the studio. We are speaking with Rich Butler of Rageworks. He's the founder of Rageworks, which is a uh, podcasting, content, creation, media, brand, audio, video, all of those good things. Uh, And uh, we've been talking about how Rich has really been a pioneer in podcasting. Uh, He's actually been doing it since 2006. And uh, before the break, we were talking about his his journey to doing it and how he got to really build his own platform. Uh, Rageworks Podcast Network is a is a is a platform that uh, you have a lot of podcasts on. You have a lot of clients, a lot of people that you work with. You know, Rich, a lot of my clients I mentioned before, I have about two or three clients right now that are considering starting a podcast. And one of the things was like, I really want to start a podcast, but I don't know what to talk about. I don't know what I want to do, but I know I want to get my message out there, right? That's what the purpose of a podcast is, right? It's literally a soapbox, right? It's a soapbox for you to comment on things, talk about things. You know, video podcasting is becoming a really big thing now. Yep. You know, how do you, I, I know you're a really good mentor to people who want to be podcasters, right? So how do you get somebody started? So getting started, you have the best podcasting tool right in your pocket, which is your phone. You can record right to voice notes. You can take that. You can use free software like Audacity. You can edit that. You can go right onto YouTube, get free music, Mm -hmm. put music at the beginning, music at the end. And you can even use a service like Anchor, which is put out by Spotify that lets you do all of that for free. Wow. And it just removes a lot of those roadblocks. Now, to go back to what you said, a lot of people, I don't know what to talk about. You always got to remember there's a lot of interest in things that you're passionate about. Right. So if you're into crocheting, mm-hmm. you could do an entire podcast about crocheting and the techniques, the methods, the stories, people that have built businesses from it. There's an endless supply of material. It's, At, it's incre- That's incredible to think about that. You could do a whole podcast on crocheting. Yep. And the thing about it is there's communities for that. I mean, there's, right. a, there's a network called the Horse Radio Network, and it's all about people that specialize in horses. And they've built... A multi a multi figure income from this because wow. again there's affiliate revenue there's right. different ways to monetize and the thing about it is that you can come out of the gate and start small but the most important part and you've talked about this before is just getting started right yeah and and that's the thing is just to get started just to you know I I walked her through how I kind of started even like what what the purpose of this radio show was right and I always said it was to come on here educate people about coaching do a little bit of coaching activate people's desire to change and connect people to a community of change, right? right. And I said, to, I was working with this one person on, on Monday and I hope she's listening because she's she, hopefully she's on her lunch break and is listening. She's out in California. But um, I said to her, I said, what are the things you're passionate about? What are the things that you absolutely love? And it's animals and it's not for profits and it's, it's fashion. It's all of these different things that she has an interest in. I said, you could do an incredible podcast and do some twist on it, right? Mm -hmm. That's really what sometimes podcasting is. You talk about what you love and you add an element of twist. Like you talking about video games and and, and your passion for that and that's how you got started. It really comes to what, what what are you passionate about and what do you want to talk about? Yeah, absolutely. And you have to draw inspiration from things that bring you joy. And the thing about it is if you are... Uh, the, this person, your client, and they want to talk about um, charity work and animals, you can you can do, you don't have to do an entire weekly episodic series. You could say, hey, we're going to do a 20 episode limited series. I want to talk about uh, charity work uh-huh. in, in, the, in this particular space. Now you've set yourself a timeline and now you don't have a pressure of, oh man, I don't have nothing to talk about this week. You right. set goals for yourself. I mean, I always tell people that want to start podcasting, listen, you don't find your voice until 10 episodes in. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I totally agree. I mean, that's that's the evolution of most things, right? Right. You, but if you don't start doing it, you don't get to that point. Yep. It dies on the vine. Absolutely. I love that idea of a limited series podcast. I think that's an awesome idea because you can come up with 10 or 20 topics 
and you can put it all together. And now, let me ask you a question about this because people are always asking, how long is a good podcast, right? What's the, what is, is there a length that works really well for people? What's, what is one of the ingredients there? They hammer it home that there's different, that, you know, 45 minutes, 30 minutes, 15 minutes. Here's what I tell people. Think of your ideal listener, whether it's you or the person that's your muse, who you want to uh, cater to. Right. If you want to cater to people that are on a commute to work, you know, they essentially have between 30 to 40 minutes tops. Right. So if you want to get a drive time podcast in, then you know you got a 30 to 40 minute window. Right. If you want to talk long form, I mean, Joe Rogan does three hours. Right. Who sits through three hours? People right. do. but People some pe do. People do it piecemeal. I mean, even when I was doing my take radio, I was doing it from 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. and I was breaking it up. MMA and wrestling had one segment. Right. Video games and entertainment had another. There'd be breaks and everything in between. And what happened was people would tune in, tune mm -hmm. out, and you'd give people that freedom of choice. But at the end of the day, if you're bringing value, don't shortchange the value because you put yourself on a time limit. Right. You know, that's a great point. But I think you brought up another really good point. It's about who is your audience? Who do you want to capture? Who do you want to inspire? Who do you want to motivate? Right. Who, who are you speaking to, right? You know, we're on at three o'clock here and on the radio, we're speaking to people driving home, people right. that may have gotten home a little early from work or just got out of school and, you know, their their parents are running around picking them up and they put the radio on for a few minutes. You got to speak, you got to know who you're speaking to and what your audience is. Absolutely. So if you have a question for Rich, give us a call at 631-451-1039. Now, Anthony in the booth, who's our sound guy, Anthony, you do your own podcast, and I know you had a question for Rich. Yeah, I do. Um, my podcast is called Backpacking America, and one of the things I've been doing the last three years is trying to figure out how to make money with it. How would I, you know, it, I've done things in the past where I've had local businesses write me a check for three months, and I would, you know, put it at the beginning of the episode. But what are some other ways outside of that? Because I have 30 minutes to an hour, and I can't jam-pack 10 commercials in that. No, here's what you do. You're doing a show about backpacking right? Backpacking across America. First thing you do, hey, we're going to talk about the 10 best backpacks to use for traveling through the Midwest. Right there, you got 10 backpacks to talk about. You go, you sign up for an Amazon affiliate account. You go, you write up the show notes, you put those backpacks in there. You link with your affiliate links to Amazon. Every time someone clicks, you'll get a, a commission from that. Obviously, you have to disclose it, but right there, boom, that's 10, 10, P, 10 affiliate links you can get. And the thing about Amazon people don't realize is that they may click that link, not buy nothing, but that cookie may stay live for a certain amount of time. So if they turn around and they don't buy a backpack, but they buy a 50-inch TV, you'll get a commission for that 50-inch TV. Because they click that affiliate link. Correct. Hey, I, I like that. Holy wow. cow. See? Holy yeah, I got to get on that. How, how do you apply for that? You go right to Amazon. You go to their affiliate program. You sign up and off to the races. It's that simple. Second way you could do it is reach out to backpack companies. Hey, I have a podcast. I specialize in this. Would love to promote your product. Sometimes they'll give you a promo code. Sometimes they'll, they'll tell you, hey, we want to buy an ad space. And then you tell, you tell them, listen, I'd love to promote your brand. I use your backpack every day. Would you be interested in doing something? And some people... You may want to exchange product for service. Some people, you could give them a, a dollar figure. It depends on how you're going to go into it. But first and foremost, take the stuff you're passionate about that you discuss and find ways to do that. If you talk about a certain energy drink, reach out to that company. Hey, I have run a podcast interested in having a chat. Listen, you could do 100 phone calls in a day and you may get... 99 no's, but there will be a yes in there. Well, and I think that's such a great point, right? We, there's all of these things out there we don't know anything about, right? This, this is great. I talk about books all the time on my show. I've talked about Dan Sullivan's books. I've talked about my own books. And you can literally make money off of money. I, I'll give you an even better one. You can sign up for an Audible affiliate program, promote audio books, and promote the books that you talk about, put them in the show notes, and boom. Wow. You see, this is fantastic information, Rich, because everyone out there is looking for a way to do something that they love and be able to monetize it. And this this is a brilliant strategy. So we're definitely going to talk more about that after the, the, the next series of breaks. Um, and listen, everyone, I'm, we've been talking with Rich Butler from Rageworks and Rageworks Podcast Network. Um, it's just been 
I, I, my mind is blown right now. Okay, it is blown at how simple it is to monetize what we're doing. Uh, it's obviously you got to put some work into it, but you know we're going to talk more about this after the commercial break. But check us out at Tom Marino Coaching on Instagram. Check out Rich at w- RageWorks on Instagram, and uh, we'll talk to you after this break. And welcome back to the Tom Marino Show. Thank you for tuning back in. I'm your host, success strategy coach, Tom Marino. It is now 3.38. We are live in the studio. I want to invite you all down here tonight between 6 and 9 at MacArthur Airport for the Long Island News uh, Long Island News Business Network event. Uh, you come on down. You get to see some of your favorite radio hosts. You get to meet us in person. I'll be here tonight. I have my book come down. If you buy a per- copy of my book, I will give you a free autograph. That's free autographs with the purchase of Bridge to Change. Uh, but come on down. Talk. To you. There's going to be a ton of people down here. We're going to have some fun. There's going to be some food. Uh, but definitely come hang out with us at MacArthur Airport between 6 and 9 p.m. tonight. And, uh, you know, bring people down. Let's have some fun. So we've been talking with Rich Butler of RageWorks, RageWorks Podcast Network. Uh, Rich has been doing podcasting and been in the podcasting space since 2006, if you can believe that one. And right before the the break, we were talking about monetizing your podcast and you know using affiliate links with Amazon if you're talking about products and, and different items and books and all of that other stuff. And I was saying, I do so many... I talk. I, I promote so many books on on the show, and uh, I need to make some money off of that, right, Rich? <laughs> Where else do I need to do things to really enhance my opportunity to monetize the, the podcast? So there's 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 always different avenues and different ways that you can serve your audience. So you can uh, give people an ebook. Mm-hmm. You can do. Um, maybe you want to do a planner mm-hmm. in your case. You know, mm-hmm. you could go on Canva, do you know a success strategy planner, right? Create it all yourself, self-publish it. You're your own commercial on your on on your show. Absolutely, I know a guy who did that recently. This guy named Adam Hurd, the six four two uh, advisor planner. That's right. That planner is a great great planner. It's it's excellent. I love how he breaks everything down. Six four two is being is a very important number, and it's a very cool thing. But uh, I I'm gonna now have to put my link. To the, I'm going to have to get an affiliate link now that I promoted Adam Hurd's uh, planner. Right. But yeah, you can do anything, right? I mean, you, you could go on and you could do anything. But that's that's really cool. Yeah, that's that's very true. And you were saying something about during the break when we were talking to Anthony a little bit more about uh, podcasting. Like, put the links in your bio, all of these places, right? Yes, you can always... You, you only have a small amount of real estate to leverage. So you have to make sure that you're not trying to be too salesy, but you're also trying to give people a genuine a genuine piece of equipment or a genuine thing that you actively support. The stuff that we're most passionate about comes across as the most believable. So when you're trying to do that, you should always obviously disclose for FTC, et cetera. Right. But anything that you're into, check every company, see if they have an affiliate program, reach out to them. You know, like I was saying during the break, you can send out a hundred emails. You're not going to get a hundred no's. Right. Right. You, hopefully you get at least one yes. That's, That's all it right. takes, That's right? That's all it takes. So, Rich, we have a caller on line one, uh, Kendra from Los Angeles. So, Kendra, welcome to the show. Hi. How are you, Kendra? Hi. Can you hear? Oh, yeah, I can hear you. Ah, uh, Fantastic. So, Rich, this is uh, a client of mine, Kendra. She was the one I was talking to you about who right. uh, has, is interested in starting her own podcast. So, Kendra, what's your question for Rich? Yeah. So hi, Rich. Um, Hello. Thanks for the time. Yeah. Hi. I am in the very beginning stages of like scoping out some ideas for a podcast. And like one question that has been like just weighing on me is like, okay, how do you come up with a name? And I don't have the concept quite yet. You know, I have some concepts, but like, what's your process for, or like advice for coming up with a podcast name? So there's a couple of ways you can do it. Um, You can use your own name and you can say, Kendra XYZ show. And then you can put a subtitle under that, or you can come up with something catchy. At the end of the day, the podcast is always going to be not about the name, but about the value and the content that you bring to the table. So you could name it XYZ and six months from now be like, Hey, we're going to rebrand and 
you're off to the races and you change the name because at the end of the day, the message will remain the same. The consistency will remain the same. The only thing that's going to change is the name. I mean, think about this. You buy Kleenex. Kleenex mm -hmm. is the brand. Right. Kleenex is not the tissue. Right. There's plenty of tissues out there, but you only know Kleenex. Right. Like Puffs Plus. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. When you think of Kle you don't think of Kleenex, you think of Puffs Plus. That's right. what you think of. That's a great question, Kendra. Uh, do you have any other questions for Rich? No, that was the big one I had. Thank you. That's awesome. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for calling. It was great to hear your voice. Of course. Thank you. All, All right. right. So that that's a great point, you know, because, you know, I repurpose the radio show as the Adrenalized Life podcast, right? And I do some other, I add some stuff into it and take away some of the radio stuff. But, you know, when I came up with the Adrenalized Life, you know, Adrenalized being my my emotional brand, I wanted right. to incorporate that and, and keep a theme of these episodes are going to Adrenalize you. But rebranding is never a bad thing, right? And listen, I know a lot of people too, that they start a podcast, then they change directions and they start another one. I mean, it's that simple, right? It, you don't have to overcomplicate it. Nope, when, when My Take Radio got retired, mytakeradio.com got rebranded as rageworks.net mm -hmm. and the Rageworks podca podcast network maintained my Take Radio as its flagship show. Right. And then as we I got see. other shows in there, it continued to grow. And pretty much that's that's the building blocks to any type of a brand. Right. So Rich, you know, we, we've been talking about content creation too and, and how important it is for, for the podcast, for anything that you're doing really d these days. I mean, you need content for everything, for social media, for your podcast, for your books, whatever it is that you're, right. what you're working on. What, what's some of the process that you offer to people that are you know struggling with content creation? So thanks to Rageworks and what we've been doing with the Rageworks Podcast Network, a lot of people like the turnkey opportunity that we offer a lot of our hosts. Okay. Uh, guys like Jay from Turnbuckle Tabloid or uh, the, you know um, Alexis from Slaying For Me, they come in, they have an idea, they don't want to deal with any sort of equipment, this, that, like they have the baseline stuff, a good microphone, a quiet mm -hmm. room, et cetera. And they want to go and just get their content out there. So what I do is I tell them, you record, mm -hmm. you send me your audio. I make you sound good. I, re I release your episodes on Spotify, et cetera. Right. And we're off to the races. I mean, uh, one of our, one of our guys, Matt Kaplowitz, he's a filmmaker. He hosts Trek Untold. Mm -hmm. He has a couple of documentaries on Amazon. He's killing it. But he doesn't want to deal with, he works a regular job like we all do. Nobody right. wants to sit there and learn how to edit audio mm -hmm. or learn how to drop an intro or an outro. They're just like, listen, I just want to get my message out there. Can you help me? Right. And that's when you tag me in and I make you sound good and take all of that pressure off of you. Right. You know, I think that's one of the biggest things that holds a lot of people back from doing this, right? Is the yep. editing piece and how much time it takes. And But there are so many tools out there that can make your life so easy to be able to do it, right? Yep. I mean, you you mentioned to me Descript, which is this great software that basically makes a transcription of the audio, and then you can simply just delete a word in a transcript, and it deletes it from the audio, and then you you know you re-download it, and you've got a perfect yep. transcript audio, the whole thing right there. Yep. You know, are there any other you know big things that are easier to like big products out there or softwares out there other than Descript that are really easy to use for people who are struggling with that? Yes. Uh, people that want to record podcasts can use Audacity. That's free. It's available on uh, Mac OS, Windows, and you can use that. It's a full audio editing suite. You mm -hmm. can do intros, outros, level out your audio. You can do all of that. Mm -hmm. You can, like I said, use Descript. If you're trying to do any sort of live podcast and you don't want to rely on Zoom mm -hmm. and the audio and video quality of Zoom, you can use companies like Riverside FM, Squadcast, and they will pretty much record the audio and the video for you, give you a separate video file, right. independent audio tracks for you and your guest. Wow. And then you can just edit that accordingly. Some of them even give you basic editing within there. Wow, that's pretty cool. So that's that. There's a lot of great stuff out there. Um, all right. So when we come back from the commercial break, let's talk a little bit about some of like the equipment stuff and some of the other stuff that people really need to start podcasting and, and what they're going to need to really get things right off the ground. All right. We've been talking with Rich Butler from Rageworks. Um, we are going to sp speak with him for one more as part of the show, one more segment of the show. So if you have a question, give us a call at 631-451-1039. That's 631-451-1039. 
go visit him at RageWorks on Instagram and at RageWorks.net. And check out my Instagram. Leave me a, a comment on my reel from yesterday uh, talking about three success strategies. Uh, go check that out. I want to hear from you at Tom Marino Coaching on Instagram. All right, we'll be back right after this break. Hey, this is Tom Marino of the Tom Marino Show here. Imagine you wake up and you've had a major sewer back up in your home. Well, let me tell you about a company that I've worked with personally, Newhouse Restoration, where they take your damaged old house and make it a new house. For any water, fire, mold, or asbestos damage, please call them at 631-604-8590. That's 631-604-8590. Newhouse Restoration. And welcome back to the Tom Marino Show. I am your host, success strategy coach, Tom Marino. Thank you so much for tuning back in. Today, we have been speaking with Rich Butler from RageWorks and RageWorks Podcast Network. Uh, We've been talking all about the different things that go into podcasting, uh, how easy it really is to do, how you just got to find what you're passionate about and start talking about it. That's as simple as it it comes, right? And Rich, right before the break, we were talking about... um, you know, some of the equipment that you would recommend to people. And we really didn't get into that. I wanted to, to touch base on that. Like I've seen all these different things for people like you know, beside the microphone and the pop filters and the wind filter, wind screens and all that stuff. There's also, um, you know, like there's this remix board that I forget the name of the company that makes one. But yep. what would you recommend if you're if if you, somebody's listening to you right now and they want to start their own podcast? What is the key pieces of equipment they need? Um, very simple. You can either look for an ATR 2100. It's made by a company called Audio Technica. It is future proof because you can connect it to your computer via USB, or you can even connect it to your mobile device and use it via USB. Then when you grow up and you want to use a mixer or something like that, it has XLR, which is uh, the three prong jack on the bottom. You can connect that in and you can plug that into a mixing board or audio interface retails for about 59 bucks. A nice, easy barrier of entry. Uh, Plenty of companies have done their own versions of that same mic. Mm -hmm. Samson does one called the Q2U, pretty much the same thing. Okay. Um, If you want to go strictly like USB, you can do good old reliable blue snowball. Mm -hmm. You can do anything from Rode. Um, But the most important thing is just finding a quiet space. Right. You want to make sure that you don't necessarily need your room treated because that takes time. Right. But- I know a lot of people that they'll go and they'll record their podcast inside a closet. Right. Because yeah. all the clothes shield right. up all the noise. Everything works. Yeah. I have this thing that's like a, a it's, it looks like a screen that wraps around yep. the microphone. It's a sound barrier. Yep. And it really absorbs a lot of the sound. And then if you're using, I understand the cardioid setting on the microphone, right? You want to get something that you have. Like what, what, from a setting standpoint, because when I was looking into this, there's cardioid mics, there's stereo mics, there's mics that do both or right. four things, five things. Like, I, what do you recommend? I like just a regular dynamic mic that you can just speak right into. Okay. That, you know, you want as much, like something you mentioned, you know, paralysis analysis. There's all these right. other other devices out there. Start small because that way, if you hang it up, you only spent 40 bucks. You only spent 50 bucks. Right. Even even going a step further, there's people that just record on their phone and, you know, they right. use Anchor or something else and boom, that's their that's their content creation machine. Wow. It's that simple. It's that simple. And and in terms of like remix boards and stuff like that, why do you need something like that? So, why can't you just plug into your computer? and record or can you you can absolutely you can definitely plug in right into your computer but you want to have a little bit more granular control over the sound you may want to have uh sound effects you may want to bring in calls you may want to have a second person in studio or in your recording space so that affords you the opportunity to just level up that podcast level up the presentation Mm -hmm. some of these boards have audio processing built in something like a noise gate so if you're somebody that taps their desk right the noise gate will remove the tapping (laughs) or if you have an air conditioner running just little things like that and adding boards and pieces of equipment it just helps you continue to level up that presentation first and foremost if your audio is good you're well ahead of the game because too many people they throw too much money at it and they still sound terrible. Right, right. No, that's really cool. I, I never thought of it that way. Like if you wanted to have a little bit more and you can you, you can enhance what you're doing. And and these mixing boards, what which one do you, are you a fan of? I currently, I was using a Rodecaster, yep. which 
pretty much does everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Tascam came out with their own, which does the same thing. And again, the barrier of entry for those is about 500 bucks. Right. You can get boards that are substantially cheaper. You can get an audio interface by like a company called Focusrite for 100, 150 bucks. That can take in two mics, right. let you tweak the audio. But again, if you're making the investment, then you want to make the investment because you know, hey, I'm not only going to podcast, but maybe I want to live stream. Maybe I want to do something on Twitch. Right. Maybe I want to level up my calls on Zoom. Mm -hmm. Maybe I want to look good when I'm talking on a space. Maybe I want to have a camera running. Right. So it's all about leveling up, but leveling up because you want to enhance the listener experience, right. not your own experience. Exactly. Now, you know, there's, there's a lot of talk these days and there's a lot of places that are doing it that they're doing video podcasting and it seems to be the wave of the the next phase of this whatever you want to call yep. it this evolution in, in in having a soapbox what are what are your thoughts on video podcasting and things like that i mean isn't youtube literally video podcasting it is but you know what the funny thing was when i was doing uh my live show uh a friend of mine he has a network he said hey man you should do video you should do video and it, there's the thing about it is that Audio is easier because there's a lower barrier of entry. My my thing with video is you want to have a good camera. You want to have good lighting. The more pieces you start adding to the mix, the more potential there is for something to break down and for you to get disillusioned and not want to continue right. doing whatever it is. Now, some there's YouTubers that you can start with just a regular USB webcam and you're off to the races. You can do that. Right. There's services that let you live stream like... Um, Ah, uh, what's the company? There's one company that lets you live stream to Twitch and YouTube and right. Facebook and everything all at the same time. Yeah, and I use StreamYard. From yep, that's, by, yep, that's it. I use StreamYard from LinkedIn. Yep. Because right now that's the only way really to stream video on LinkedIn. I do a live every Friday uh, for, for 10 minutes on LinkedIn just to reach my LinkedIn audience. But yeah, you could pay for the subscription and you can stream it to like five different channels, six different channels. That's right. And you can go right to your YouTube. So, I mean, it, it's really, I mean, it's really incredible what we can do in this day and age and how easy it is to get information out there, everything. Yep. I mean, there's just, again, so many things to learn. What would you say to somebody who is, you know, who wants to start a podcast, is overthinking it, what would you really say to them to just do? I would say that your first 10 episodes are going to be your worst episodes, okay. but they're the ones that are going to help you fine tune your next 10 episodes. Okay. And above all that, just go out there and have a good time. Right. It's not always going to be great. It's not always going to be a home run, but guess what? If you connect with your listeners, they're going to understand those growing pains. Exactly. But they want that consistent that consistency. You have to respect the listener. Right. Well, you know what? It, that's a lot of it. It's showing up consistently. It's every every whatever consistency you decide, right? Yep. It could be every week, it could be every day, it could be once a month, but you have to establish some kind of consistency and set the expectation for your listeners. One of the things that I had heard previously um right before we wrap up here is that you know, you really should have at least four or five episodes ready to go when you launch your podcast. Is is that true? Is that a, a like is that a industry standard? Nah, I wouldn't say it's an industry standard. But what you don't want to do, especially if you're gaining your footing, is you don't want life to get in the way and then people get disappointed. How many people get upset when your television show gets preempted? Right. So think about your your audience the same way. Right. If you give them one episode, they don't hear from you for a month. Right. They're not going to come back. Well, I always think about too, like when we do, uh, when you're st streaming on demand, right? I mean, when you, when they like, when Netflix releases only eight episodes and then they hold off on the other eight, you know, it's cool because you can stream it and you can get to it, but you're still waiting, right? And people, mm -hmm. and we live in an on demand world, right? Absolutely. So, Rich, tell everyone how they can reach you. What's the best way? And we'll go from there. Uh, you can find Rageworks pretty much on any social media platform at Rageworks. You can visit us at Rageworks.net. If you want to enjoy all of our shows, visit us at Rageworksnetwork.com. All of our shows are there. Trek Untold, Turnbuckle Tabloid, Slaying for Me. My podcast, Toys and Tech of the Trade, is on there as well. And you can also follow the network on Twitter at RageWorksNet. And there's also now an Instagram at RageWorks Podcast Network. Fantastic. And you'll be able to keep up with all of our podcasting adventures, plus all of our pop culture stuff, too. Thanks for being here, my friend. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Well, that wraps up another episode of the Tom Marino Show. 
Um, I hope that you, if you've been listening, I hope you got something out of it. I hope we, Rich has motivated you to start a podcast, to just get out there and just do it. Accept that things are going to be a little rocky at first, but that's how you grow, people. That's how we transform, and that's the whole point of this. All right. Tonight, don't forget, from 6 to 9 p.m., we have a networking event here at MacArthur Airport. Come on down, meet your favorite radio host from the network here. And uh, until next time, this is Tom Marino saying, choose your adrenalized life. Yeah. No offense to you, don't waste your time.